Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Whitney Ward, and I am joined again by Mark Hanrahan, who is actually at home tonight practicing social distancing. Hi, Mark. Hey, good evening, Whitney. Yeah, this is day three of anchoring from home here. I feel like the honeymoon is kind of over and we're now into a kind of a consistent workflow. And quickly, I just want to give a shout out to all the stay at home parents. Uh, you guys are miracle workers. OK, in the meantime, we have a lot of news to get to, so let's get straight to it. Early this morning, the U.S. Senate and the White House reached a deal on a massive two trillion dollar stimulus package to pump that money into the U.S. economy. The deal comes as President Trump is looking to get Americans in many parts of the country out of the House and back to work by Easter. New numbers released this afternoon show there are now 54 confirmed cases of coronavirus in Spokane County. That's a 63 percent increase from 33 cases that we had yesterday. No deaths have been reported in Spokane County, but several patients have been hospitalized. Statewide, Washington health officials report more than 2,400 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 123 deaths. Meantime, Idaho now has 123 confirmed coronavirus cases. Kootenai County reporting two more confirmed cases, bringing the total there to nine. Our healthcare, public safety workers, are putting themselves in harm's way to respond to the coronavirus emergency. And we owe it to them to do our part by following the statewide stay home order. The statewide stay home order. That is Idaho Governor Brad Little. He also stated that an emergency declaration for Idaho has been signed. This allows the state to be more effective in increasing the health care capacity so the system is not overrun. The Idaho National Guard is also preparing to help local authorities. Idaho Governor Brad Little has confirmed that due to community transmission of the coronavirus, a statewide shutdown is now in place effective immediately for 21 days. All non-essential businesses are to close. This means businesses like gyms, bars, salons, and convention centers must close. Restaurants can still remain open for drive through delivery, or takeout options. Residents must also limit all non-essential travel. Well, several businesses in Washington are spending their last hours open right now before closing for two weeks. That's because Washington Governor Jay Inslee issued a closure to all non-essential businesses to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Krem 2 Shana Waltower spoke with a couple local business owners about how they're preparing for this change. Yeah, guys, this marks a change for both non-essential and some essential businesses. Republic Pies owner here says that when they sell their last slice of pizza tonight, they'll be closed for two weeks. It's kind of scary. The Groovy Merchants record shop isn't an essential business, so its owner has closed the doors, unsure of when he'll be able to spin the records again. It's just the uncertainty on the other side. I don't know if it's only going to be two weeks, if it's much longer than that. David Thorne's small shop is his only source of income. Now he's considering selling records online to keep some of his sales. That's one thing that's scary. You know, a small business, it's it can be tough anyway. And some of these people are just transitioning or some people might have just opened the business and uh, it's might just put them right back out. But Thorn Shop and the other non-essential businesses in the area aren't the only ones closing. Inslee's order allows restaurants to stay open for takeout, but some popular Spokane restaurants are still choosing to close. We just want to get to the other side of this as fast as we can. Julie Norris owns Downriver Grill and manages Flying Goat and Republic Pie. She says by the end of the day Wednesday, they'll all be closed. A lot of the people that come into our restaurants we see every day, and I think that might be the hardest part. She says the restaurants will close for the full two weeks of Inslee's order, but for now, the business owners I talk to say they're trying to remain optimistic. It was a really, really difficult decision. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But we did feel like it was going to be the best for our staff and, and for the Spokane community. You know, I tried to stay on the positive side of it. Just, I mean, imagine all the projects I could get done that I've put off for five and a half years now. And, and I In Spokane, Shana Waltower, Crime 2 News. And we encourage you to send us any of your coronavirus questions. You can do that really easily by just texting us uh, any questions to the number 509 448 2000 and specifically text us the word fax for that to that same number for the latest on COVID-19. 
All right, new tonight, investigators say the man who hit and killed a Washington State Patrol trooper did it on purpose. 28-year-old Trooper Justin Schaefer, a seven-year veteran of WSP, died in the line of duty last night. He had just laid spike strips on I-5 near Chehalis to try to stop the suspect. William Thompson was wanted for shoplifting from a convenience store. Thompson led police on a chase and driving right towards Schaefer and another trooper trying to stop him. The second trooper hit was injured but survived. Schaefer died at the hospital. He leaves behind his wife, mother, and his father. Governor Jay Inslee signed a bill banning retailers from handing out free single-use plastic bags in the state. This is an attempt to reduce pollution. Shoppers will have to either bring their own bag or pay an eight-cent fee for a reusable carry-out bag. The Catholic Diocese of Spokane has extended their suspension of public masses until April 13th. That's the day after Easter. This is despite that previously postponed date of March 31st. The sacrament of penance is to be reserved for those in near danger of death. The sacrament of the sick is similarly restricted. Funeral masses and graveside services are prohibited per state instructions. All parish activities and parish office hours are to be canceled. While mass may be closed to the public, Bishop Daly encouraged the faithful of the diocese to persevere in prayer, he said. All right, thanks, Mark. Take a look at this. This is video of the snow falling at the National Weather Service office in Airway Heights this morning. Kind of a mixed bag of weather most of the week so far. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick is in for Tom Sherry tonight. Thomas, what do you think we can expect here for the rest of our work week? I, I tell you what, Whitney, you and I discussed a, a couple minutes ago that you on the north side had a fresh coating of snow. Me on the south side of town, I saw the snow, but it didn't stick. But it actually started to pile up at a couple locations across the inland northwest. So take a look at some of the viewer photos that you have been sending my way over the last hour here. Uh, these two are from Cheney and Post Falls, respectively, on the left and right. But keep those weather photos coming. Just hit me up on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll make sure to rotate those weather photos. Photos, the snowy ones, of course, from earlier today throughout the broadcasts tonight. As for Doppler radar, still looking at a few scattered showers, either of the rain and or snow varieties. I think that'll continue for at least a couple hours here. But a much bigger weather system on the way for this upcoming weekend. Thankfully warmer, so a lot more rain, a lot less snow with this particular system. But I'll be timing out when you can expect the rain and those winds to really start picking up yet again. Full details in that forecast in just a few moments. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you. Spokane Police announced today investigators have solved a 1985 cold case murder of a 12 year old girl. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley explains now how detectives solved the, solved the case 35 years later. This is 12 year old Marcy Belez. Spokane Police say she ran away from home August 3rd, 1985. Her body was found two days later in a vehicle impound yard. Investigators identified 87 possible suspects. Now, 35 years later, they determined who her killer was with the help of new DNA analysis technology. Marcy was last seen at a party on the evening of August 4th, 1985. The next morning, her body was found in this vehicle tow yard on East Pacific. According to the autopsy report, she was raped and stabbed. Investigators did not have many leads, but they knew she died at the tow yard where her body was found. They did not find defensive wounds, showing she did not fight off her attacker. The case eventually went cold. But then, a Virginia DNA technology company took the unknown DNA sample from the crime scene and submitted it to a genetic database for comparison. The hope was to find people who share significant amounts of DNA with the possible suspect. Using this technology, investigators linked Marcy's death to Clayton C. Giese from Montana. He was 22 years old and lived in Spokane at the time of the murder. Giese died in a rollover crash in Spokane Valley in January 1989, just four years after Marcy's death. Giese's family gave investigators permission to exhume his remains for DNA sampling. We're not going to name them, but I'll give them credit. They, they stepped up and did the right thing. Technology confirmed Giese's DNA was a match to that found at the crime scene. 
It's one of the closest DNA matches investigators have ever seen. It's about as high as, as we get as, as far as, as certainty goes or as far as, far as um, the weight we can put on the evidence. According to police, Giese had a minor criminal background with one arrest for a marijuana charge shortly before the car crash that killed him. Justice in this case, maybe not the guy's deceased, but closure, I think, for the family, uh, for the community, for people that remember that. Right now, Spokane police say there are about 113 unsolved murders dating back to the 1950s. Now, the same technology could be used to help solve other cases. Reporting from home, Amanda Rowley, CREM2 News. Amanda, thank you very much. Late last night, WSU's football team was hit with some devastating news. Brenna Green is here now with more on that. Brenna. Yeah, Whitney, it broke late last night that WSU safety Bryce Beekman had passed away. Just into the newsroom an hour ago, the Whitman County coroner saying Beekman's cause of death will not be known for two to three months. The Pullman police did confirm with us that they responded to a call for breathing problems at Beekman's apartment yesterday at 5.54 p.m. Beekman started all 13 games for the Cougs last season and had the fifth most tackles on the team with 60. He had an interception against Oregon State as well, oh, as well as a fumble recovery against Houston and a forced fumble against Northern Colorado. He was a junior college transfer. Last year was his first season with the Cougs. Several of his teammates took to Twitter to mourn Beekman's loss. Running back Max Borgi said in part, Heaven has gained an angel, one of the purest souls I have ever met. There was never a day my man Beek wasn't smiling. Offensive lineman Liam Ryan said, not one but two in my college career, referring to Tyler Holinsky's passing two years ago. I just pray for his family because this brought back a lot of emotions. Man, sometimes I just ask God why. Watch over us, brother and see you in heaven. Rest in love 26 and 3. Fellow defensive back Skylar Thomas said, took a piece of my heart with this one. Let them dread shake in heaven. And finally, Mike Leach weighing in from Mississippi. Heartfelt thoughts and prayers go out to the Beekman family and the Washington State University community. Bryce was an incredible kid who always had a smile and a kind word for everyone. Like I said, this comes two years after Tyler Holinsky's suicide. Beekman and Holinsky were not on WSU's team at the same time. Tonight in Sports at 6, I'll talk more about Bryce's character as a human being. Whitney.